There is no fear in liberty, but fear the God who made us free. The old world order is what we need. Our constitution, the liberty seed. They didn't fight for foreign chains. They sacrificed for freedom's reign. The blasphemy of our great patriots by a president makes my blood run hot. Disarm and let old glory die. The first great freedom flag to fly. That beckons pride to swell and tear to try. Like forefathers of old in pig's eye. The federal government breeds catastrophe in the home of the brave, land of the free. United Nations law and foreign run? Not me, you foreign aid traitors in Washington. My people fought for the USA. I won't dishonor the debt they pay. They gave their all for freedom's side, for God and country and Christian pride. Vote Democrat, Republican? Not this time. In patriotic common sense coins, you ain't worth a dime. Our children's children's future bestowed on foreign aid while our POW heroes are still enslaved. Our constitution is not taught in school. Our God not given his rightful rule. Tax till death for crime and waste. Justice slapped by law in her blindfolded face. Our children molested, women raped. Is crime set free, not held escaped? Vote for a bigger national debt? More graft, greed, corruption, a tax take bet? Thank God insanity ain't claimed me yet. I'll vote patriotic, Bill of Rights, Constitution, Freedoms, Liberties, Growing Life. Hello, my name is Ken Adams, and welcome to this edition of the Militia News Network. Once again, throughout the country, the media spotlight has been on the militia. CBS, NBC, Phil Donahue, Time Magazine and Newsweek have all done interviews with the national militias. What we'd like to do right now is show you a little bit of what goes on behind the scenes and what doesn't air on television. MNN was there when CBS was in northern Michigan doing their piece on the Michigan militia. So now let's take a look at some of the interviews that took place, the length of these interviews, so you can see exactly what they use and what they don't use in their news pieces. Today you are the epitome of well-regulated militia people, and I appreciate that. Uh, you're looking smart, you're looking uh, orderly, doing your job, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And you are to be complimented for that. I, I, I salute you. I can't tell you how, how uh, grateful I am for the, for the tremendous response that you've given. And of course, nobody had to call you forth. Nobody here on earth called you forth. You understand that. You came forth because you had to. You couldn't do anything else. Amen. So you're here today because nobody's invited you, but the Lord himself has asked you to come and stand for liberty and freedom. And you need to be encouraged in that because when the arm of flesh fails you, you will not be able to trust your own. You will only be able to stand for what you believe. And the final resolve, that's exactly what it's all about. That's why you're here today. 
because this is what you believe in. There probably hasn't been an encampment of militia members like this since colonial days. The spirit of what we're seeing in America today is an echo of what happened 230, 240 years ago. People of America are trying to stand up and to, to, to say very loudly to those who are governing us that enough is enough. They must be pressed back into their oaths of office. They must be pressed back into the restrictions and the reins, the control of our Constitution. That's the message we're trying to send them. I hope that they'll read the message. I hope that they'll break the code. I hope that they will see what you're trying to tell them. God help us if they don't. But I want everyone to know that we are ready. We are going to stand. We are not going to be derailed. We are not going to be pushed off. The rock upon which we stand, the ideals and the principles that you hold firm within you and embrace for yourselves and your family and for your loved ones and for your neighbors, those ideals and those principles are the things that are going to keep you on track. And those are the principles that are also going to keep your focus very precise, and very clear in what you must do. And again, I commend you. I want to tell you, however, that there is some ominous clouds on the horizon, the things that you've been thinking about, the very thing that you've been preparing for may not be too far away. Continue to train, continue to equip yourself, continue to instruct each other, continue to inform each other on the things that you're hearing and seeing and doing, share your knowledge. If we face the opposition, like our forefathers did, God will go up for us. I have every confidence that if our heart is pure and our cause is right, that our God will lay his good hand upon us. You people are out here and you have absolutely no earthly motivation for being here. How many of you are satisfied with your pay? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. As, as often has been said about working in the ministry, that it doesn't pay much, but the retirement plan is out of this world. <laughs> and I, and I, believe, I believe that there's something to be said for that also. That no earthly motivation can make you come to these events. No earthly motivation can make you pour 150% of all of your effort into, into events like this. No amount of a motivation can keep you positive and, and uh, reinforced in your own beliefs. No earthly motivation can do that. You're going to have to dig down deep inside of you. The number of people that are here today and the amount of dedication and perseverance and persistence that's being displayed here in this event is obvious that there is that motivation from within. And again, I commend you. I commend you. Our course is fixed and our goal is liberty and freedom and the restoration of our constitutional republic. Amen. Never Amen. lose sight of your goal. If you lose sight of the goal and you think that this is the sum total of what the militia is all about, you're wrong. It's all, you're off course. Look for those goals beyond today. Look for those goals that we want to establish for our children and our grandchildren. Those are the goals that are admirable. Those are the goals that are lofty. And those are the goals that, that echo the ideals that are within each of you. What I'm saying to you today are not mere platitudes. Don't misunderstand me. I'm making you no promises. I'll let the politicians do that. I'm telling you that we today come to the reality that what we must give is blood, sweat, toil, tears, disappointment, pain, loneliness, hurt. We may not see the end of this battle from this shore, but I will guarantee you we will know the end of this battle from that heavenly shore. That's no right. matter what happens. Amen. No matter what happens, we will know how it all came out. That's right. So I say unto you, I'm proud of you, proud of you. Send the word across this country. Let people know what we're doing. You hold your heads high, you walk proudly, you stand as Americans. You don't have to get caught down in the noise level of all of the petty bickering and all the arguing and all of the other thumb-worn creeds that people espouse. 
You stand as Americans, God-fearing, pure Americans, righteous Americans, Americans who love liberty. Amen. That message will be heard by everyone who sees you, no doubt about it. And they will be confounded, or they'll not understand what drives you, what makes you stand so tall. You'll not have to argue with them over philosophies or, or political ideas. To stand tall for what you believe in. What can I say? You're already encouraged. Let's look toward tomorrow. Let's look toward the next rendezvous. Let's look toward the next training sessions. Maybe the pits will be a little deeper and the, the snow on the ground. <laughs> I was up there leaping across those logs you have in the ground. Those, what do they call it, the stepping stones? I don't know. Uh, yes, yeah. I can imagine those with a little ice on them. Hobnail <laughs> <laughs> boots, right. <coughs> You're, you all to be encouraged again, I, and I respect you. I say thank you. Send the word. Each one of you are an integral part, and each one of you are, are part of an integrated whole. You have to go back with cogs in a wheel. A machine cannot function. If it misses one cog, you are all parts of that wheel and that machine. Get the word out. When you go back home, find people. Let them know what you've done here. Let them know what you've seen here. Let them know what you've felt here. Let them know what you've said and shared here. Let them know that. Let them know that you're real. Let them know that you're here to stay and you're not going to go away. That's right. And no matter what happens, I know one thing, gentlemen and ladies, here or there in the air, we will meet again. I have no doubt about it. No yeah. doubt about it. In closing, again, I just tell you, continue to equip, to inform, to instruct, to encourage. It, look like, it looks like there may be there may be a day coming when we are going to have to stand together. But I have more confidence now than I did six months ago in knowing that there are many hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, yea, millions now standing up in America with whom I can stand. And even though my strength is not in the number of people that surround me, my strength is in God alone. I want to tell you something that any soldier knows that out on the battlefield, it's always a comforting thing to look to one's right and one's left and know that there are other soldiers who are standing there also. And so for that, I guess I say I'm, in, I'm indebted to you and I'm grateful to you for giving me that confidence. <coughs> we're here for you and you're here for me and so we are all here for one another. That's what, that's what the unity of this whole effort is all about. God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you so much for coming. The next one, we hope we'll have during deer season, that right? You can eat the deer that run into your tent. <laughs> you folks see what you're fired up, don't you? This is not happening just here. This is happening nationwide. <coughs> Even in Canada, it's starting to happen. I was up there on a fishing trip this summer and happened to hand out some militia literature. Ooh, literature. I say, I happened to hand it out. <laughs> it happened to take with me. <laughs> well, I was calling the other day. That, uh, the colonel told me about here, Colonel Adams, and he said, you know, I can't remember exactly where it's from, but it's six hours from here. Well, I'll be. That's where I'll go fishing six hours from here up in Ontario. So maybe that's where it started from, but wherever it started from, we're glad to see it. So let's go on with our day's training here. Fourth division, up near the flagpole. The rest of you go. Uh, what made you want to join us? You think you need at least uh, some kind of A lot of different things. Uh, the incident with Randy Weaver, but Waco was the final blow for me. When I can see law enforcement officers of the federal government murder American citizens. Never provide a single shred of evidence that those, there was any wrongdoing. And I believe, in, I believe that if the ATF would have went there in their business suits and handed that man a warrant, and those four agents would have been shot down, I would have been one of the first guys to say, man the bulldozers, let's get them out of there. But they didn't do that. They come in the pre-dawn, they start shooting, and if my home was under attack, I would return fire. I don't care who it was. If somebody comes to my home and they start shooting, I am going to return fire. And these people, they were just defending themselves, and they were murdered. And I believe that in my heart, and it is obscene that in America, under the guise of saving children, we murder children. 
It's, it's disgusting beyond You've belief. Got that skill and that so how does a militia oh, prevent that? I'm sorry. I didn't know how to do that. I just stop doing it. I'm sorry. All right. Okay, how does the militia prevent what you just described? I believe that there's a lot of us. The militia can be a force for good. We're not a bunch of hate mongers out here, but we are, as we are people who believe in the Constitution, who believe that citizens of this great nation deserve to be equal treatment under the law and deserve the due process that is guaranteed them. And if federal agents fear that if they come out and try to use their brown shirt tax tactics on law-abiding citizens, if they fear that people like me are going to say, no, enough, and we're not going to tolerate it, they may change their ways. I hope they change their ways. Because God knows I don't want to hurt anybody, and I don't want to see anybody get hurt. But they've got to, they've got to change their ways. They've got to start treating American citizens with the respect that is due them, that's granted them in the Constitution. And the Constitution just signifies rights that were granted to us by God. It's not something man-made up. These rights were ours before they put them on paper. Out of this first brigade, how much does gun control have to do with this? Into the second brigade. To me, it has quite a bit to do with it. You have a government, when I was 19 years old, couldn't wait to give me a machine gun. If they could have taught me to shoot two of them at the same time, they would have, they would have hopped right on that program. Now, I'm 32 years old, I'm a lot wiser, I'm a lot mellower, and now I can't be trusted with something that holds more than 10 rounds of ammunition or that has a bayonet lug. Uh, you know, when was the last time some crazed postal employee ran into the post office and bayoneted 20 people to death? It doesn't happen. It's ridiculous. What they're trying to do is systematically disarm the American people, and they're going to use every little thing that they can find. Oh, my gosh, bayonet lug. Oh, isn't that frightening? Let's take that weapon. And then what's next? Oh, hey, you can hold one or three rounds in that shotgun. And then eventually they're going to say, hey, if you want to hunt, you can just sign your rifles out from the local sheriff's department, go hunt for the day, and then sign them back in. That's fascism. In America is about liberty. Americans despise fascism. The Americans despise totalitarian government. And that is what is being forced down our throat. What's your stance as the militia in terms of our agency, say like the ATF, who took it upon themselves to disarm so stand up and take the yeah, I would hope that only single men come to my door because I would not want to leave any widows. But if they come to take my weapons that I have never committed a crime with, that I have never threatened another human being with, that I have never used in an unlawful manner, if they come to take my weapons, they're going to have a fight on their hands. And it's going to be a bloody constraint that they will not want to pay the butcher bill for because I will not go peacefully. Okay, and Mr. Weller, what, why did you join the militia? Because uh, the country's getting too corrupt today. The, uh, there is no United States Constitution, there's no state constitution. Everybody makes their own laws, uh, the law makes their own laws. There's no justice in the system, the more the... It was just done for I mean, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, no, nothing is decent no more. It's, uh, you can't get, there's no justice in, in the country. It's all there is the justice is gone. So what, what can you do about it? <laughs> well, we got to organize and, and get more of us. To, I've been fighting it for 15 years and I can't do anything with it alone. In numbers you got power, but in one you got nothing, see. So what is what are your personal grievances? Well, uh, the law beat me up, and I can't seem to do anything about it because they legalized police brutality in the state. What did they do to you? They showed me on the pavement so hard that my hat went seven feet down the road beyond me, and then they jumped on my back and smashed my head to the pavement so the blood ran out of my eyes and injured my spine its entire length. The nerves going into my bladder <coughs> and uh, I got kidney trouble out of it. And, uh, and what do you do for a living? I'm a real estate broker. And what do you do for the militia? I'm the information officer for the Michigan State Militia. Okay. Why form a state militia like you've done up here? Well, uh, initially we didn't start the state militia initially 
a uh, number of uh, citizens, uh, because of the fear of what's going on in our country, decided to band together for defense uh, locally, just geographically in our county. Once we uh, went public with that, um, we found that people all over the state have the same fears that we have, and uh, they started forming their own militias in their individual counties. Once uh, that occurred, um, we started networking with each other. And then the natural progression was uh, election of a state commander, where Norm Olson was elected as state commander. I suppose you've already had bullets fly over you. I wonder when I was at the target right now. Or when I was in a riot. Oh, okay. See, I knew there'd be some story to go here already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me again, in general, what your fears are about the way the government is today. Our government is uh, infringing on our constitutional rights, and I don't think that uh, most people would disagree with that. Um, but there's enough people now that are realizing that uh, that infringement is to such a level that we need to be uh, become very defensive against the tyrants. And uh, people are now banding together all over this country to help defend uh, against tyranny. And it's just, it's neighbor helping neighbor. It's, it's really that basic uh, of an approach. How do you want to see things change? I think that uh, politically, uh, the elected officials need to re read the Constitution, if they ever have read the Constitution. The Constitution needs to be taught in law school. I question whether the lawyers we have in this great nation have ever read the Constitution. Um, as I've talked to different lawyers and talked about the Constitution, they're real vague about that and what it stands for. Um, so primarily, rereading re the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and understanding what those liberties and freedoms were all about that our forefathers fought and died for. Um. Why did you join the militia? My main reason for joining the militia was for concerns out of what's going on in the country. Um, I can see a deterioration. And uh, being that I am a single parent, I have children to look out for at home, even though they're young adult children. And that's basically why. And how do you think the militia can help? Um, I think for me personally, uh, it's my way of um, doing something instead of nothing. For a lot of years, I always knew there was something wrong in the country and kind of felt like I was the only one that was out there that felt that way. But um, and it's good support, and, and I'm standing up for something that I, I truly believe in. It's out of love for my country and for my God. A lot of people take a look at a group like this and make associations with, you know, extremist groups, racist groups. Um, do you think this is a racist organization? No, no way, no. Th these are a bunch of great, hardworking Americans that uh, share the same interests and the same beliefs that I do. And I've never, never, um, you know, had any problems with any of them. They're a great bunch to be with, great bunch of friends. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of activity that goes around in network news broadcast. CBS spent four days in northern Michigan, and as you can see, a lot takes place, and you just saw a small portion, obviously, of the four days that they were here. In addition to that, there's been a lot of uh, foreign correspondents, foreign newscasts that have come to visit us also in northern Michigan, uh, included uh, Russian television, Japanese television, Norway TV, Swedish television, and many others. And what we'd like to do now is show one of those broadcasts in the same way that it aired in their country with Swedish television. Here's the piece. See what they have shown in their country. Ready on the firing line? You may commence firing. Ten rounds. My intent is to save the liberties of this country for my children. In America, we no longer have a government that is frightened of the people. We have the people frightened of the government. People are becoming so frightened that they're arming themselves to defend themselves. I want you to know, Michigan militia, listen. You are the spearhead for this entire campaign of liberation across the nation. 
You in Michigan have set the pace. Everyone in this country is looking to Michigan for leadership. We are drawing this country back together as Americans for principle and for dignity and goodness and justice and righteousness and love for each other. All right, order of the day, weapon safety. You know, the government seems to be out of control. There seems to be more restrictions on us as citizens. And uh, when those kind of things happen, people get concerned. I think it's time to stand up for what we believe in. Constitution has been walked all over. Our Second Amendment, our right to keep and bear arms, is the Enforcer Amendment. Without that, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution is nothing because the people can't back it up. They send people down in the pit so yeah. they'll get used to the sound of bullets coming over your head. What you're listening to is a bullet that weighs about a third of an ounce traveling about 2,700 feet a second striking that backstop. Fire! Run! The American people are begging the government to be allowed to do the things that we always accepted as our inalienable rights. Something's wrong. So you're not asking your government for health care, for education. You are actually asking your government to leave you alone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. That's as simple as that. Yes. Och för att få bli lämnad i fred, slippa vapenrestriktioner, bilbälteskrav och miljölagar så har de beväpnat sig. De har träningsläger minst tre gånger i månaden. De ska försvara sig mot fienden som inte bara är regeringen i Washington. Hotet kommer också utifrån trots att den gamla fienden Sovjetunionen fallit sönder. We're getting under one world government, one world religion. We're losing our rights so fast. And you think, and you think your own government is knows about this and plays along with it? Yes. Each country is giving up control to the U.S. That's what we're doing. It's going to be a global controlled world under a totalitarian government. Everyone I know is, is getting worried about UN in America. They don't want it, and nobody wants it. I don't see UN as a threat to Sweden, no. You don't? No. I like being an American, not part of the United Nations. And I think we should just keep our rights and keep them the way they are. Don't have anybody coming in and telling us what to do. Is that the same for you? Basically, yeah. Uh, I don't like anybody saying we can't own guns or anything. I mean, we're not hurting anybody with them, so there shouldn't be any reason why we shouldn't be able to have them. We have four divisions. Then within those divisions, we began to organize by counties. And so you notice that each county is numbered, and that's for communication. De är väl organiserade. Och sen starten i våras har budskapet nått vida kring och milisgruppen i Michigan har fått efterföljare runt om i landet. We've had phone calls from Anchorage, Alaska, uh, to San Diego, to, to Florida. Here in the basement is where we assemble a lot of our paperwork that we ship out to people. Uh, we put our books together over in this area over here. And then here we have a small studio set up. This is where we do our, our, our own personal news video that we send out to the people in the state and across the country to let them know what's going on in the militia movement. Ken Adams, and it's been reported that 25% of the nation's counties now have militia members. The militia movement is now said to be the fastest growing organization in the country. The national membership is now estimated at over 150,000 and growing by thousands daily. De och många fler visade sitt missnöje vid kongressvalet. Amerikanen söker frihet från regering och styrning idag. Antingen det nu kommer från Vita huset, FN-skrapan eller handelsorganisationer. There will be a World Trade Organization Supreme Court that will make decisions and we in this country must abide by those decisions. Also look at the UN and what they're doing. Have you read The Rights of the Child? Yes. Do you have any problem with The Rights of the Child? No. Okay, let me tell you that I have a problem with it because I as a parent will make decisions on how my child is raised. And no one, no one will interfere with that. The UN's plan to disarm the world 
Have you read that? I think we have a copy of that over there. Well, shouldn't that be quite a good thing towards peace? No, det är inte riktigt det budskapet som förs ut. Patriotism och frihet hör ihop med vapen här. Och den som vill begränsa vapeninnehav, förbjuda automatvapen, han uppskattas inte. Bill Clinton is a traitor. He has sold out the American people. He has violated the oath of his office. He has trashed the Constitution. He has done everything to weaken this country instead of making it stronger. He has lied, he has schemed, he has done everything bad for this country. So if I sound a little harsh on Bill Clinton, maybe it's just an echo of a million other voices. Great things he hath done. Amen. May our lives reflect Christ. Som pastor bär han inte sin uniform och församlingen har kanske minskat något på grund av hans aktiviteter. Men grundbudskapet, mindre statlig kontroll och styrning och rättning höger ut, det har stöd bland många, många fler än de aktiva milismedlemmarna. As you all know, I went to Lansing to protest the UN flag being raised over City Hall. And... We sing songs that I've forgotten. God bless America. Long now, let's call. Jump right out and shout. Let's call. If my shoot don't open wide. When history is written, there will be a lot written about the Michigan militia. Stand up, buckle up, jump to the door. Stand up, buckle up, jump to the door. Jump right out and shout. Let's call. As information continues to spread across the nation about the militia, several organizations are beginning to target the militia with false information, demonizing them, putting out reports. In this next segment, you will hear Ray Southwell and then Norm Olson respond to some of these reports. Um, wanted to discuss a little bit uh, the development of the militia and why we've gone so public and, and possibly by sharing this information with you you too uh, as you develop your militias will have a better understanding on the importance of going public and uh, what will happen as as things develop initially after we went public it was to spread the word of what's going on in this country and we felt that we could find some news media that would research the reason for our fears um, to my great um, surprise, uh, it is very difficult to find any news media at any level um, that are willing to expose um, what's going on in this country, and uh, most are, are frightened of researching the truth. We uh, continue to deal with the media and will continue to talk to the media, continually searching and looking for someone that is willing to expose the truth. We've talked to over uh, two dozen different news medias, and initially the news media attempted to demonize uh, the militia. And I'm sure many of you watching this video have felt the same um, pressure from the news media, and that's why many of you have backed off and uh, more or less have gone underground or quietly preparing to defend your home and your property. We will again, uh, with the Michigan Militia, continue to do everything in our power to expose the truth with what's going on in this country. Whatever the cost, whatever the consequences, we will continue to expose the truth. Part of the demonization that has occurred in the news media uh, initially was personal attacks uh, on the commander and uh, myself regarding our involvement uh, with the uh, militia. Um, and it was uh, that we were anti-Semitic, that we were racist, um, any number of um, things that were so far-fetched that I personally had trouble uh, believing that anyone would believe that information without documentation. As time marched on and as we uh, switched uh, to an alternative uh, news um, sources and, and obviously the video 
um, that we've put out um, over these last several months is an excellent way of getting the truth out. The news media then started at that time sharing and, and sharing with us and the people uh, reading their articles or seeing their footage, recognizing that we were not anti-Semitic or racist. We do have Jews in the militia. We do have minorities in the militia. Now, the militia says they welcome any volunteer to their group, and they don't discriminate on the basis of age, sex, race, or religion. Well, Guy, I've made a couple of trips up north. I've spent many hours with these men and women, and I can say that they're not white supremacists. Well, they are not skinheads, not neo-Nazis, not Klansmen, not white supremacists, but people who care about the Constitution of the United States and their country. For now, they, things have stepped up to another level. There are hate groups in this country that um, under the guise of trying to protect people from other hate groups, they themselves become the hate group. They will take hearsay or they will take information from previous newspaper articles and paint us as anti-Semitic or racist. Initially, when I first uh, saw an ADL report on the militia uh, from the Detroit region from uh, Dick Lobenthal. I immediately got on the phone and talked to Mr. Lobenthal about who I was as a person, my concerns with what is going on in this country. Uh, by the end of our conversation, I feel that he then realized that uh, I was not anti-Semitic, that I am not a hateful person, but certainly I have many concerns and fears with what's going on in this country. I felt that at that time we had um, built somewhat of a bridge um, with the Anti-Defamation League. But apparently there are powers in the ADL that want to divide and um, squelch the militia movement, squelch the exposure of the truth, because the ADL nationally now has um, stepped up their demonization of the militia. Um, earlier this month, uh, this is December, earlier this month the ADL put out a 28-page report. In this report they do address the Michigan militia. Most of the information that's in the uh, report came from earlier newspaper articles that were demonizing the militia. Now understand this report came out after my conversation with Mr. Lobenthal in Detroit, after I thought we had an understanding on who uh, the Michigan militia was and what we were all about. Um, it states uh, in here, and this is again the ADL report, and um, it's the national one uh, dated 1994. It's called Armed and Dangerous. Militias take aim at the federal government. Understand that when someone refers to government in this country, we the people are the government. We the people made a contract called the Constitution with our elected officials. The bureaucrats then become the hired servants for those agents, our elected officials. The ADL has quoted me as saying, Southwell speaks as though he regards confrontation with law enforcement as inevitable. I don't see it as inevitable and not with law enforcement. Many of the law enforcement personnel that I talked to, that I have talked to over these last months, also see and are quite frightened with the tyranny that is spreading throughout this country, primarily at the federal level. When I have talked to our local sheriff in this county and understand that the militia is very supportive of all sheriffs, sheriffs are our only elected police agency or police individual. We're very supportive with those um, uh, law enforcement agencies. And when he shares with me the idea that if he has to come to my house with a warrant to search my house, his officers will come with their name tags, with the warrant. They will not hide behind masks. That excites me because he will respect me as an individual and I too will respect his authority to come in with a legal warrant to search my home. 
He treats me with respect, and I certainly respect him. However, when I have talked to the um, uh, ATF uh, in, in Grand Rapids and Detroit, and also with the Attorney General's Office in the state of Michigan, they have informed me that police agencies like the ATF, they do not have to show you the warrant initially, they do not have to identify themselves, and they can hide behind the mask. They can hide behind a mask, treat you without respect. I have a problem with that, and that's part of what I'm trying to expose with being involved in the militia. That's part of the fear that I have and why I want to be able to help my neighbor and have um, uh, my neighbor help me. So I don't see a confrontation with law enforcement. I see possibly a confrontation with tyrants, but not with the elected law enforcement in this county or in other counties. His, uh, again, this is the ADL report. His militia is preparing for the day when martial law is declared. Understand that this is not my militia. I am one person in the militia in the county. I am one person in the militia in the state. So it's not his militia. It is the people's militia with the concept that we elect a commander and we support each other. His militia is pre preparing for the day when martial law is declared. Yes, I believe, given the course of events, the um, martial law will be declared within the next two years. And this whole principle of neighbor helping neighbor is as basic as you protecting your home. The only difference is now I have neighbors that are willing to come and help protect me w with my home. We are taking a stand, he says, and are prepared to lose everything. That's correct. There are patriotic people, and certainly a number of you looking at this videotape, are militia members that are taking a stand. We're not taking a stand for us. We're taking it for our children. So when you have these organizations like the ADL taking misinformation, twisting the truth, and sending the information out, who do they send this information out? thousands, and I believe in this particular report, um, no, I'm, I stand corrected. Um, that's the um, Cl uh, Klan Watch. Um, they have a mailing list of 6,000 police agencies and newspapers. But the uh, ADL report do, uh, does, is sent out to the uh, police consortium, whatever that is. So once these lies and mistruths are in print, they are automatically uh, sent to many police agencies and newspapers that automatically uh, take them as truth. And I'm here to tell you that if anyone in the police agencies or newspapers receives any of this trash, please give me a call. I would be more than happy to address each and every charge. The Klan Watch organization was established earlier this year. Uh, I believe it was sometime in uh, September or October. They, too, have sent out propaganda. They have sent out lies. They become, again, an organization that will tell people you need to check on someone, check on their past. My name has been referred to in a letter written to a newspaper reporter that Southwell needed to be checked out. Well, please, check me out. Look at my past. I'm not perfect, but two things that I am not and never have been are racist or anti-Semitic. And I challenge anyone looking for the truth to try to um, find the, that information that there's any way, shape, or form that I'm racist or anti-Semitic. Most recently, the uh, Klan Watch has come out uh, demonizing me specifically um, and actually traveling to uh, another state to meet with allegedly someone that is uh, a racist. Now, I don't know if this individual is racist or not, because I don't know this individual. But the point is, this information has been sent out to who knows how many people 
This is the kind of thing that will happen to you in the militia. This is the kind of a thing that will happen to anyone taking a stand trying to expose the truth. And once again, when I talk to the individual that sent out the information about me with Klan Watch, they have nothing to say. They cannot document any of the allegations. And when I call them out on the carpet, they turn right around and step up the attacks on me personally. I will challenge any of them to try to find any truth to anything that they say. Once again, they have become the group, a group, uh, a hate group that they allegedly are supposed to be protecting the people from. Because of this type of, um, of mistruth, lies, if you will, because that's what they are, they are lies, uh, to set up militia leaders, we with the Michigan militia will be, and at this time are establishing our own watch group on hate groups in America. We will examine these organizations and expose them to the best of our ability as the hate groups that they have become. Often we hear, hear of other hate groups and there are lists of these alleged hate groups out there. Who's putting that information out? Well, two of them are the Klan Watch and the ADL. These are organizations that have become nothing more than the hate groups that they, uh, again, are trying to tell the American people that they're protecting people from. So the Michigan Militia will be establishing um, information for the news media and for other militias regarding the hate information that these organizations will, um, will be putting out. So as you view this videotape, if you find yourself on their hate list, please contact the Michigan, Mi Michigan Militia at 616-526-3900 because here in the Michigan Militia, we will expose the truth. We will have our task force showing the public and the country about these hate groups that have been established to squelch freedom in America. Thank you very much for your time. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam. We bless you, O Lord our God, King of the universe and all that is within it, who have given us Shabbos in love and in favor. Amen. 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 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their hosts. And, all, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and performed. Daniel. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Thank you. Here in uh, northern Michigan, uh, where the Michigan militia really spread, um, more recently now there have been much accusa accusations that uh, the militia is infiltrated by uh, anti-Semites. Uh, and um, I guess what I'd like to have you answer and respond to that, you are a Jew, mm -hmm. you have joined uh, the Michigan militia. Um, certainly in your background and growing up as a Jew you've seen those individuals that are um, uh, anti-Semite and 
my question to you is, are you seeing that in the militia? And in northern Michigan generally, what, what have you seen? I did not see as much growing up anti-Semitism because uh, we were not recognized as Jews growing up. Um, uh, now that I'm an adult and I am uh, practicing many more of the cultural and uh, spiritual aspects of, the, of uh, what it means to be a Jew, I certainly am much more visible when someone dresses a certain way or they are evidently something, they become uh, open to uh, various groups, if they will, and, and uh, they become a target to different individuals and groups that might seek them harm, and that certainly is a legitimate concern. I had that concern also. Uh, what, that was one of the major concerns I had when I thought about the Michigan Militia. Are these a bunch of people who are such as the Aryan Nation and the, uh, the KKK? Are these people are extremists who will... Um, uh, what, what is this uh, happening in, in our area? And that was one of the reasons I, I searched it out. Let me say uh, very strongly that anti-Semitism is alive and well in northern Michigan, as in many communities throughout the United States. I've experienced it here. Uh, there are people who would much rather um, I not live here. Uh, however, my experience with the militia has been a very uh, gratifying one. When I got to know a lot of the fellows from the militia, uh, I found that I was embraced with open arms. The, uh, before they knew that I was a Jew and we were communicating on the phone, and I had not told anyone that, of course, uh, you can't see a a keep on someone's head when they're on the phone. Uh, I have been told on the telephone that we don't discriminate against anyone's race or their faith. Whatever creed they have, every citizen is entitled to join the militia if they so choose. Well, that was a good sign. Uh, I wondered how they would feel when I appeared in their midst, though. And when I did appear in their midst, I was welcomed very warmly. Uh, they have a chaplain in there, uh, in the brigade that I joined, and the chaplain and I hit it off immediately. Uh, I found he was very knowledgeable. Is he a Jew? No, he's not. Uh, I found he was very he was very knowledgeable about the scriptures. He had a lot to say um, regarding prophecy, and uh, in fact, I know that he on a bulletin board service uh, corresponds with people in Israel, and he uh, he subscribes to the Jerusalem Post and. And this is the kind of atmosphere I walked into. I know that in the talk he gave, he gave an illustration of, of uh, a story that happened shortly after the Six-Day War. Uh, everything was geared to um, uh, welcome me uh, to their midst, and I was very pleased to see that. Uh, I hope that answers your question. If you saw anti-Semitism expressed in some of the brigade members and... Um, you took it to the command staff at the brigade level. What do you feel the response would be? Well, I, I'd like to first say I think that, that the responsibility I would have if I saw anti-Semitism would be to address it myself to the person who was doing it. I think that's the first step to take before I go to the command structure. And uh, because I believe that you can resolve many conflicts with a little understanding. And uh, I have no enemies. Uh, I have no personal grudges. And uh, I want to always believe the best in people. Uh, but barring any uh, progress, and if it continued and it was taken to the commander, um, we have been told that they, the one thing that is not tolerated in the ranks of the militia, I guess there's, there's two or three things that I, that I could highlight that they mentioned were not tolerated. And one, number one would be, the breaking of the law. Uh, absolutely, um, you don't last in the militia when you're breaking the law. You're gone. And the second is when you begin to discriminate against another member of the militia for whatever reason. It might be their their, their race, their culture, their faith. And uh, it simply isn't done. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. I also want to. I would like to re address a report that was written by a Mr. Bill Dunham, and this is allegedly written. The uh, 
an intelligence officer from the tactical intelligence branch of the AF a ATF in Washington. It is a briefing paper put together by the Intelligence Division dated October 26, 1994. Title of the briefing paper is An Overview of Militia Movement Operating Throughout the United States. Since I am addressing the militias of the United States, I probably, like you, are very much concerned about some of the information that is being published. I would like to uh, refer to the portion pertaining to the Michigan militia and go through this article just briefly and then touch on a couple other things which I believe are taking place here in the United States. Let me read from this paragraph and correct a few misstatements that, uh, that we immediately discovered. It says, since March 1994, the ATF Detroit field office has noted the escalation of the militia movement in Michigan from a theoretical group of individuals who advocate returning to the Constitution to a full-blown paramilitary organization which is growing with unprecedented speed. Now, first of all, I'd like to correct one misstatement. We are not a paramilitary organization. We are military with respect to the colonial aspect of what the militia is. In other words, we are the colonial Minutemen put into the modern context. The United States military, the organized military, was the product of a United States government. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish liberty, to provide for the common defense. And by providing for the common defense, it was necessary to create an organized military force. That means that if there's an organized military force, there also must be an unorganized military force. That military force resides with the people. It will always be with the people. We do not try to mimic the military. We are the militia, which are the people. Let me go on. It says here that uh, militias have been identified in 66 of, 80, of Michigan's 85 counties. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to bring something to light. If this report is true, then the federal government apparently has added two unknown counties to Michigan, uh, to the 83 counties within this state. And if this is true, we would like the ATF to identify those two unknown counties to us so that we can establish militias in those counties. I would like to refer to the point of unprecedented speed. Yes, we are growing with unprecedented speed. It is a phenomenon. It is a literal explosion of liberty-loving people here in the United States. Let me go on. It says the formation of militias in Michigan is believed to have been spearheaded by the Northern Michigan Militia 1st Brigade, headed by Norman Olson, a former career Air Force officer, minister, and current fire, uh, federal firearms licensee. Yes, I am a federal firearms licensee. Yes, I am a minister. But no, I am not an Air Force officer. If the federal government has so tagged me, then I wish that they would contact the retired pay branch of the military pay service so that I can have the commensurate pay. I retired as a non-commissioned officer to keep the record straight. And while I'm at it, let me also bring up another point. This is a, an article that was uh, written by the Chicago Daily, I'm sorry, by the Sheboygan Daily Tribune, uh, December 7th, 1994. In it, you will see a quote, and uh, the quote states, the quote states that uh, we are asking the federal government to abide by the laws of Michigan. If the federal government can't abide by the laws, how can we trust them at all? Where are we ever going to draw the line? Commander Norman Olson, United States Army. Now, the federal government has me as an Air Force officer. Our local newspaper has me as a commander in the United States Army. Now this is, it may be laughable, but there is also a serious part to this, that there have been arrests made because of people who have paraded themselves as military officers or military uh, members. Now, of course, that is a federal crime to masquerade as a, a military member. However, when you are painted as something you are not by the federal government and also by the local newspaper, then these things are collected. Eventually, they will arrest, and since there has been no rebuttal to these, these kinds of charges or these kinds of publications, then they may say that since we did not deny them, therefore we accepted them to be true. 
to set the record straight, I deny them. I am not an Army officer, nor am I an Air Force officer. Again, to keep the record straight, and so whatever jury or judge sees this tape down the line, you will know that I am neither one of those. Let me go on. It says, the militias are considered to be separate and distinct from each other, yet Olson is the self-appointed liaison among the various militias in Michigan. Uh, wrong and wrong. First of all, I am not self-appointed. The Michigan Militia Corps operates under a democratic system in that we vote our leadership into office. I was uh, voted into office by the brigade commanders of the state of Michigan. I am not self-appointed. The ones who voted me into office can also vote me out of office, and in which case I will leave because no leader, sh no leader without a following, uh, it, uh, it of course cancels that office altogether. But it also says that I am a self-appointed liaison among various militias in Michigan. I am not a liaison between various militias in Michigan. Uh, we don't talk to other militias in Michigan. There are many of them, but our job is pretty well uh, limited and our time is fully consumed by networking and talking to the brigades within the state of Michigan. We have precious little time to be talking to other militia organizations. Not only that, but I myself do not have enough hours in the day to be the liaison between other organizations. I have a staff and the staff talks with our brigades and with the divisional commanders throughout the state. That is the extent to which we talk with other militias. Now, we, uh, we will be talking with them if they want to come under the umbrella of the Michigan militia to, again, set the record straight, because we believe that turning the light on of truth uh, onto any situation is going to be helpful uh, for us in the end. Let me go on. It's, it should be noted that Olson is selling large quantities of firearms through his business and may be selling them to militia members. Let me repeat that. And, and now take this into consideration that I am a businessman. My business is gun shop owner. And that's how I make part of the living by which I uh, subsist. It, it should be noted that Olson is selling large quantities of firearms through his business and may be selling them to militia members. In the uh, vernacular of the day, well, duh. <laughs> I'm a businessman. I use capitalism the free enterprise system to sell the product. I sell firearms. I sell them to militia members. And who are the militia? The whole people, with the exception of a few politicians. And I'm not sure that I would sell firearms to politicians anyway. But certainly, certainly, if I am selling firearms to militia members, then what's wrong with that? And if I'm selling large quantities to them, then we, again, must ask the question, is there anything wrong with selling firearms to other Americans? Is there anything wrong with selling large quantities of firearms to other Americans? I'm a federal firearms licensee. I sell legally. All of my records are there to be inspected by the same ones who have tried to discredit me. And to give you a little predictable scenario, I suppose that when they come to inspect me, that they will find something wrong. I'm pretty sure of it. But let's go on. According to the Detroit Field Division, the following groups have been found to be related in some manner to the various militias in Michigan. What is happening in this statement is the ATF is linking us with various militias in Michigan. Some of you have heard about the three men, sometimes known as the Fowlerville Three, men who were allegedly stopped with alleged weapons and alleged loaded magazines in their vehicle. Again, there has been no trial, there, and, and we're not sure whether the evidence will ever be clean enough for a jury to make a proper determination on anyway. But the point is that we are being linked with many other groups of militia people across this state. Not only that, but it goes on to say that the Michigan militia, our militia, is linked to such nefarious and, and uh, terrible groups as the National Unorganized Militia. Again, who are the militia? The whole people. There is a vast National Unorganized Militia. In fact,